The things that you go through Seems nobody goes with you Your life's feeling kind of dry And you're just a crane, get your high And good morning. Welcome to Oak City Church. I'm sitting in for Pastor Bobby once again. Please continue to pray for him. We pr appreciate your prayers, First Lady Grace and the Oak City Church family. Uh, today, we will be blessed with a message from our youth pastor, Pastor Jonathan Bates, as he continues this series in the book of Hosea. Uh, before we hear from Pastor John, let's go to God in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you in Jesus' name. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness, your mercy, your grace, your loving kindness, your faithfulness, your patience with us. We thank you, Lord, for giving us a Savior. We thank you, Lord, for salvation through Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for what he did on Calvary's cross for our sins. We ask you, Lord, to visit us again this day. Give us what you want us to have, Lord. Teach us what you want us to know and make us into the people of God you call us to be, to yon in your glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you for joining us at Oak City Church today. We are studying our fourth lesson out of the book of Hosea today. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just come before you in Jesus' name. Bless us, Father, to receive your words, God, to hear your words and to respond, God. I ask that you till the hearts of any unbelievers, God, so they're able to hear your voice. And I just trust in you, God. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace, God. Thank you for the shed blood at Calvary. We just trust in you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. As I said before, we are in our fourth lesson on the book of Jose. I think this is the last lesson in this series. And we're talking about probably the central theme and most important element, by my estimation, of this wonderful book. And it is God's mercy and grace. And I don't know about you, but just hearing mercy and grace makes me want to praise the name of the Lord, um, because that is how we are saved. Uh, I mean, and that is what Jesus did for us when he bled and died for us. So we're going to talk about this topic and talk about how the book of Hosea, before uh, the incarnation, before Jesus ever walked the earth as a man, um, God's made Hosea go through these things, and we're about to see uh, some more pieces of this. So let's do just a real quick um, recap on some things. Uh, the first thing, the first theme that we discuss in the book of Hosea is God's broken heart. Uh, we talked about how, you know, when you look at the book of Hosea, it is like a love letter um, written to a uh, adulterous wife. Um, it is it is passionate. And there are ebbs and flows in the book of Hosea that, that are very clear that a very jealous God um, desires his bride. <laughs> and, uh, and we see this all throughout the book of Hosea. Even today, we're going to delve into that even deeper. Um, and then the second thing we talked about is God's judgment and chastisement. We talked about how God's chastisement is not about destroying, but it's about restoring and rebuilding. And sometimes that doesn't feel very good. Um, it, sometimes it feels like when you're being chastised, like you're being destroyed. But but God's plan is so that that you come out of chastisement in better standing and in a better situation than you were uh, when you started. So um, but today we're talking about the last uh, overall overarching theme 
that I decided to discuss out of the book of Hosea, which is God's mercy and grace. And uh, and like I said before, uh, this is to me the, the the central theme of this book. And you could maybe say the central theme of the scriptures in general, um, because we we serve a loving God who has who has just uh, reached so far uh, to, to bring us to him. So um, without further ado, we're just going to start. We're actually going to start in Hosea chapter two, the latter part. And I know we've we've discussed Hosea chapter two uh, in other lessons, but I think that we have to start here. All right, so Hosea 2, um, and we're going to start at verse 19. And he says, I will betroth thee unto me forever. Yea, I will betroth thee unto me in righteousness and in judgment and in loving kindness and in mercies. I will even betroth thee unto me in faithfulness, and thou shalt know the Lord. Now, it's interesting to me that he says, I will even betroth thee unto me in faithfulness. And this might just be me looking, reading into this a little bit. But it's interesting because in this story, in this story of of Hosea and in the story between God and Israel, um, the overarching theme is a very, very unfaithful people, a very, very unfaithful wife. And when God says, I will even betroth thee unto me in faithfulness, I mean, this is this is a God that's saying, even though you've been undeserving, I'm still going to be faithful to you. And I just I just love uh, the God of our salvation in this way. Um, And then verse 21, he says, and it shall come to pass in that day I will hear saith the Lord, I will hear the heavens and they shall hear the earth and the earth shall hear the corn and the wine and the oil and they shall hear Jezreel and I will sow unto me in the earth and I will have mercy upon her that had not obtained mercy and I will say to them which were not my people, thou art my people and they shall say, thou art my God. So we see God's plan, even in the midst of this, this unfaithful people, even in the midst of this unfaithful marriage. Um, well, the next question is, how how is God going to take this unfaithful situation, a person that just is rejecting him, a, a people that's just rejecting him? How on earth is God going to make this work? How is he going to cause the the this unfaithful person to come back to desire him to be worthy of 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 uh of of love to be worthy of this great relationship uh, that God desires and here's where we pick up in Hosea 3 and uh and it says then saith the Lord unto me go yet love a woman beloved of her friend yet an adulteress, according to the love of the Lord toward the children of Israel, who look to other gods and love flagons of wine. So I bought her to me for 15 pieces of silver and for an homer of barley and a half homer of barley. Now, this is so intense to me because this is his wife. This is Gomer. This is Gomer, who is the wife of Hosea. And Hosea is going to somebody else who is not her husband and buying her back. A woman who wasn't even worthy of forgiveness was purchased by her husband, who she was unfaithful to. Does that remind you of anything at all? (laughs) First Corinthians six, uh, verse 19 and 20. uh, Paul says, what? Know you not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own, for ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. We are bought with a price. 
We belong to the Lord. The precious blood of Jesus was shed. And it wasn't just shed for no reason. It was shed to buy us back. It was shed to cover our sins. And we are not our own. Why? Because we're bought. <laughs> we were bought with a price. And it's beautiful that, that, that hundreds of years before Jesus died on a cross, hundreds of years before that moment, God had Hosea go back and buy Gomer. He had Hosea go back and purchase something that should have been his to begin with. <laughs> that is the God we serve. You can't get so far away from God that he can't come back for you. And he comes and Hosea, just as Hosea came back for Gomer, the God of our salvation came back for us. And while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He sent his son to pay the price so that he could have us be one with us again. Um, and in verse uh, Hosea 3, verse 3, it says, And I said unto her, Thou shalt abide for me many days. Thou shalt not play the harlot. Thou shalt not be for another man. So will I also be for thee. Now, this is interesting because uh, Hosea didn't just buy her back and just say, hey, just do, do the same thing you used to do. Go back and run around with men some more. That's not what he does here. What he does is he buys her back and he says, hey, check this out. I need you to be with me. I need you to be faithful to me. And that's what God desires of believers. It, it's not good enough just to believe on Jesus and get with the Lord and then go back doing the same thing you used to do. You're bought with a price. Like, like not only did we not deserve to be purchased to begin with, we're purchased with the most precious currency that has ever existed in the universe, the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And we should desire to do his will. We should desire to not play the harlot. We should desire to put God first in everything that we do. We serve a jealous God. Now, you know, I don't have to paint much of a picture because the Bible does a real good job of painting the picture of God being a jealous God. Moses refers to God as a jealous God multiple times in Deuteronomy and Exodus. Joshua describes God as jealous God as a jealous God in Joshua 24, 19. Paul describes his feelings toward the Corinthian church as godly jealousy that expresses dedication to their, relation, to their relationship with God in 2 Corinthians 11. And we, we, and these are not the only places. We see it in Psalms. We see it multiple places in Psalms. We see it all throughout the Bible that we serve a jealous God. And this is not a bad thing. This just means that God loves us deeply. Now, a God that would send his son to die is a God that does not want us with anybody else. I mean, I should if if there was a, a church in front of me, I would expect to hear a man when I said a God that's willing to send his son to die is a God that doesn't want us with anybody else. We serve a jealous God. That doesn't make you right to be jealous yourself. <laughs> this is a righteous jealousy, a God that just is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. All should come back to him. This is the God that we serve, a God who loves us deeply. In Hosea 3, uh, Chapter three, verse four and five, it says, for the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king and without a prince and without a sacrifice and without an image and without an ephod and without teraphim. Afterwards, shall the children of Israel return and seek the Lord their God and David their king and shall fear the Lord and his goodness in the latter days. Now, um, this is a picture of what's to come, this relationship that Jesus Christ is going to bring, uh, particularly when he comes back. Um, and I love the book of Hosea because it doesn't it doesn't hold any uh, punches. It, it, it talks about things that are going to happen now. It talks about things that are going to happen in the future. And it talks about things that haven't even happened yet. Um, but this is this is God's desire that we come into that fellowship, that we come into that relationship with him. 
Now, this is the last thing that Hosea, this is the last chapter in Hosea. And the first part of the last chapter, I think it's really beautiful because it's a call back. And this is what I'm calling you today. I'm asking you to come back to God. I'm asking you to come. Now, you might say, I have not been serving other gods. I'm still asking you to come back to God today. There might be an area of your life that's exalted. Come back to God. There might be something in your life that's impure. Come back to God. In whatever area in your life that you can come back to God in right now, I'm going to ask you the same way Hosea asked the children of Israel by the, by the spirit of God, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, come back to God. In Hosea 14, he says, O Israel, return unto the Lord thy God, for thou hast fallen by thine iniquity. Take your words, take with you words, and turn to the Lord. Say unto him, take away all iniquity and receive us graciously. So will we render the calves of our lips sacrifice. Asher shall not save us. We will not ride upon horses. Neither will we say any more to the work of our hands. Ye are our gods. For in thee, the fatherless findeth mercy. I will heal their backsliding. I will love them freely for my anger is turned away from them. There is a God right now waiting with open arms. He's waiting to heal your backsliding right now. He's waiting with tears in his eyes, with open open arms, just as the prodigal son's father was waiting in the window when the prodigal son came over the hill and he came running out. Your heavenly father, the God of the universe, is waiting for you to come back to him with open arms. He doesn't care what you've been through. It doesn't matter how deeply you feel you were in sin. You might have you might you might feel that you were so deep in sin that even God couldn't couldn't rescue you. I don't care what sins you struggle with. You might struggle with homosexuality. You might struggle with just sexual immorality. You might struggle with a cussing too much. You might you might be a drunkard. You might be disobedient to parents. You might be a thief, a robber, even a murderer. It does not matter how far you have gone from God. The blood of Jesus still works and it can cleanse you right now of your sins. You have been bought with a price, paid for in full by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And God's sanctified blood from the beginning of time And the Lamb of God was slain before the foundation of the earth. God knew he was going to send Jesus to the cross. And he also knew that three days later, he was going to get up from the grave with all power in his hands. If you'll put your trust in him today, he'll take away all your sins. This is a call to repentance. This is a call to turn away from your old life and to follow the God of your salvation the God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Will you put your trust in him today? We're so glad that you decided to join us today at Oak City Church. The things that you go through Seems nobody goes with you yeah. Your life's feeling kind of dry And you're just a crane, get your high.